God is with you. He was with many. The Bible is full of testimony after testimony of different people that God was with. God was with Saul. He was the first king of Israel who stood head and shoulders above the rest. The people, excuse me, the people wanted a king. God said, I'll be your king. They said, everybody else have a king. We want a king too. He was the people's choice. God was with him. In the beginning, as long as he was faithful, God was with him. God was with Job, even in his sickness, even in the loss of his family, even through bankruptcy. But God restored him double because of his faithfulness. Anybody in here going through some things, going through some financial trouble, feeling like you're about to lose everything, you might want to look at how God was with Job and how Job, Job maintained his integrity. He was careful what came out of his mouth. Amen. But when you read the beginning of the story, make sure you read the end. Write down and make a note of what he had. And if you look at the end of that story, everything was doubled. God gave him double because God was with him. Abel, a hero of the faith, found favor in God's eyes because he brought the very best to God. His brother Cain didn't receive the same favor because Cain brought an offering over time when it was convenient. But Abel gave God the very best and God was with him. Hannah prayed to God for a child and God gave her Samuel. Samuel was raised in the house of God. He heard from God at an early age and he was had the privilege of anointing the first two kings of Israel, Saul and David. And there were many women. Many people said the women of God need to be silent. Well, the word of God. In the word of God, God used many women. God used Esther. Amen? She saved the whole nation from being annihilated. God used Eve, the wife of Adam, amen, to birth forth humanity. God used Mary, the mother of Jesus. She carried our Savior in her earthly body. God used Sarah, who had Isaac at the age of 90. God used Elizabeth, who birthed forth the, the forerunner of Jesus Christ. Her baby leaped on the inside of her when Mary and Jesus showed up. God used Miriam, who was Moses' sister, to stand beside her brother when he delivered a nation Hallelujah, out of captivity. God used Deborah, who was a judge in the Old Testament, when the captain of the army went and go. And she said, I'll go with you, but the, it's going to be credited to me. The woman of God was a judge. God used Ruth, who found Boaz by serving Naomi. God used Rahab, who was a hoe. Amen. But, but she knew enough to know God. She knew the men of God. She helped the men of God. She hid the men of God. And God restored her whole She's listed right over there with Abel and the rest of the Hebrews of faith. God used Rachel, who was barren. Her sister picked at her because she couldn't have any children. How many of you got people talking and they're running their mouth and they're picking on you because your stuff, your money ain't up like their money. You don't have the job like they have. You might not have the car like they have. Hallelujah. But Rachel went to God and God opened up her womb and God gave her not just any child. God gave her
Christ and his only message was repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. I know what you're doing and what you're doing is contrary to the word of God. You need to repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. I see what you did. You need to repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. I don't care who don't like it. You need to repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. God will quit your attack. God will quit Noah who built an ark before there was ever any rain. Noah God. 
Because your situation may change. Your season may change. But God's word will never change. And as long as you know the word of God, you'll be able to build yourself up through the word of God. The word of God is infallible. But God's timing is impeccable. Everything associated with this season and assignment has to come into alignment. When God says no, trust him. Wait on him. When God says no, move with God. I remember when my mom was working at the school system. And she loved what she did, but she had also been accepted into nursing school. What she didn't know was that she couldn't go to nursing school at night. But for some reason, they fired her, and it was a wrongful termination. We're talking about the timing of God. They went before the unemployment board, and it was thought to be wrongful termination. So they had to give her unemployment while she went to school. But don't you understand that if they wouldn't have fired her, she would have had to quit. Right. And she would have had to go to school, amen, with no income. Right. But the timing of God is impeccable. If you trust God when he says no, when he says not yet, move now. Talk to this person. Go over here. Do not move. Do what God say to his timing is impeccable. And God's favor is indescribable. Favor is for a lifetime, and it creates opportunities. It supplies provision and sustainability that words can, cannot describe. The favor of God, the favor of God will get you into doors that you're not even qualified to walk in because of the favor of God. You will be able to walk up and give somebody a name and they'll let you in to see the president, let you in to see the president of the company or the CEO because of who you know. The favor of God. You'll be able to walk into opportunities that you're not even qualified for. Amen. The word of God is infallible. God's timing. The timing of God is impeccable. And the favor of God is indescribable. Somebody say God is with me. God is with me. God is with me. That's the word of the Lord for the people of God. God says I'm with you. Lift your heads up. Don't feel bad. Come out of the spirit of shame. Hallelujah. Bind it up. Silence your fears. Because God says, I'm with you. I am with you. Remember, he says, wherever you go, I'm with you. And to the promises that I promised you are fulfilled. Amen. Get out your seat and go tell somebody God is with you.